to another episode. <laughs> okay. Easy for you to say. Yeah. Welcome to Media Monsters Podcast. I'm Danny Galvez. And I'm Jeremy Schreifels. And welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you've been listening and taking notes. We try to bring you impactful, strategically based information every week that you can actually listen, absorb, and then implement immediately. So otherwise, it's just two people talking. And that's not the main mission of Media Monsters. We want you to grab the information that we take, our time, our attention, our energy that we put into hours of research. And we've also created a community on Facebook we'd love for you to check out. Make sure you just ask to join. Go to Facebook and find Media Monsters. It's a wonderful group. And basically, it's the group created with other creators and contributors, entrepreneurs, authors, influencers, musicians. We've got people from all walks of life. We have people from everywhere in that group. So we'd love for you to come in and start collaborating and share some of your your awesome wins that you have during the week, no matter how big or small those successes are, they all count. And also don't be afraid to ask a question inside of the group because that could lead to an, another podcast episode or I guarantee someone else is waiting to ask that same question and they just don't want to. Yeah, and we, and we know it's, it's, it's tough sometimes because you don't want to, you know, we all have access to Google and we used to use that response and mortgage and say, well, you have Google, right? Oh, uh, yeah, but I just thought it'd be easier to ask you. And yeah, it is. It's easier to ask the question than to go and do hours of research. So that's why we created Media Monsters to make your life easy. And we don't know everything, but we know the people who do as a collective. So it's we'd love to join us. All right. So we're going to talk about efficiency today. Efficiency in your social media game. And Jeremy and I were talking a little bit just about schedulers and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about some of the scheduling tools, some of the pros and cons. We're not going to do a real deep dive on those today. A lot of that you're going to have to do some research on, and you're going to have to study like a scientist. So Jeremy, you were talking earlier, we we're talking offline before we started, but you had experience using Buffer. Right. Um, Buffer, I think was one of the one of the first actual platforms that came through that allowed you to schedule to multiple platforms all at once. And so I used it for a number of years in an, in an agency setting. And then it, it gets to be cumbersome because it would set limits on how many platforms you could post to or how many posts you could actually schedule out. And in the early days, it was also like what kind of content you could actually post. Now, most of the schedulers, um, many of the ones that we're going to talk about today, they're going to allow you to schedule into your stories. They're going to allow you to schedule memes, videos, images, long form, all of the kinds of content that we talked about last week that you should be putting into your weekly posting schedule. But I think the biggest power in these schedulers is what we talked about, and that's the, the efficiency piece. Like we have that one spot to go to. Um, I haven't personally used Buffer in a minute. And so I don't know how much they've expanded their space in the last couple of years. Um, I know that one platform that you and I, Danny, are using is called meetedgar.com, which has been extremely powerful because it's actually allowed us to put all of our platforms in one space and have one place to go to and organize it. You know, it's been fantastic too. And I think right now, so looking at social media and that prospect of doing that, like the main objective of this is A, if you have somebody on your team to help you with this, or if you don't have somebody on your team, either way, it's an efficiency tool. Now, it's not a complete replacement for um, showing up in the algorithms. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to remember to do both do your organic posting in real time, but also have planned out posting. This would be great for branding, like on your Facebook pages, your Facebook groups. If you need filler content, if you're promoting a product or a service, no matter what it is, a video, maybe a podcast episode, you can actually do that. Some of the main, the main places that we live in Meet Edgar has many capabilities. So it doesn't matter what type of business you have, but we use ours for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. We have not deployed yet, but Pinterest is also another um, platform that you can use. And then the other one is going to be Google Business, Twitter. That's also on there. 
So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven platforms that you can be posting on daily. You start doing that with your brand, your name, your content, people are going to know who you are in a short order of time. So if we're doing the math, seven posts, just even if it's just one per day per asset, that's a lot. Adds up every single week. Multiply that times 30 days, now 60 days, now 90 days. You've got compound attention month over month for anything that you're promoting. So it's, it's a wonderful tool to use. There are some limits, like Jeremy was talking about, you know, there are going to be certain things that get flagged. Hey, the image is too big or you can't post it in this. Um, it's pretty easy once you get everything set up. That's probably the most time consuming is going to be actually getting in, setting everything up, making sure your one profile is linked to all the other ones. And yes, you'll have to log in. Um, usually, depending on if you're posting to a group, and we don't have to do that this episode because it's very micro. We're getting into like this will make your eyebrows burn off because of <laughs> you just sit there. I, I don't want to deter you from using the, the scheduling platforms because they are very helpful. It's nice to wake up and you know that the night before you did a whole week's worth of work and posting in just a couple of hours. And it's fantastic. So there's two parts of it, the content creation and then the actual scheduling and posting. And again, if you're doing this solo, if you're a solopreneur or you have a team or even one person, a team is more than one, right? If you have a person of one, a team of one, give that job to them to do. You create the content, give them the content to schedule. That's it. And later on this episode, we're going to talk about the ideal times for posting. So another tool you might want to look at if you're specifically sold on Instagram is going to be Gram2, G-R-A-M-T-O. I like that platform. You can go in and create all of those hashtags instead of having to to fill them out or grab them from a, a Word document, you can put everything inside of that platform and it's fantastic. And you can schedule out your Instagram feed for the whole week. It's wonderful. But I would say Meet Edgar is probably a little more diversified. It allows you to do a lot more things. So um, Gram2 does have a special feature where if somebody signs up on your link, anything they purchase for a certain period of time, you'll get a commission from it. So little known fact about Gram2, it's G-R-A-M-T-O.com. You should check it out. So Not a bad idea. No, it's not bad at all. One that you can use for specifically more focused on Facebook would be the Meta platform, which is the backend platform of Facebook. Um, if you have using the business manager space in there, it does work really well for managing the Facebook posts. The nice part about that is it also has all of your analytics in the back of there. So it lets you see what posts are working the best for you already. It also lets you see what times of day, which we'll talk about in a later episode in terms of what that looks like. When should you be posting those consistent posts? And that's probably the best way um, that we found to do the consistent content or the scheduled content is when we know that those are the high traffic or high, the highest opportunity for the most amount of eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you the best opportunity for your brand to be seen all the time. Schedule those because they might be at like 5 a.m. You might not be a morning person. It also could be at 9 p.m. You might go to bed early because you're the morning person. Mm -hmm. No, so it gives you that opportunity, but then you can continue that organic post kind of like what Danny said throughout the day or throughout the week. However, that plays into your business. It makes it really easy. And, you know, we haven't even taken a deep dive on meta as well, going back there, because the last thing any of these platforms wants is for you to send content someplace else to another platform. They don't want you taking the eyeballs off of their platform because then that takes away from their advertising dollars mm -hmm. so and it's crazy right now too um you can see there's a big fight right now with tiktok the time that you're watching this they just got done grilling the ceo of tiktok and it's pretty interesting if you have a chance go check it out i'm sure you can find the replays all over youtube but pay very close attention to what they're doing because there's there's an ability for us to reach more people a lot faster than the traditional streams of communication. And that right there, when the people can band together and rely on one another, 
it changes the game. The people then truly have the power. So this is why we tell you to, it's not just about business or growing a brand. Maybe you're an introvert and you're like, I hate social media. It's ruined my life. Whatever the case may be, continue to post on it because it's for a greater cause. And a lot of it is connection. You're going to be able to help somebody with those talents and skills that you've developed the entirety of your life. It's not for you. It's not for vanity. There's somebody or a group of people that you'll be able to help as a result. And we all know it feels good to give. It feels good to be useful. And at the end of the day, I think every human being wants that. So right. I think a, a, a thing to just add on to that of the posting, whether you like it or not, is you are helping someone and that makes it worth it. And you might not know that ever. And you might, or you might not know that for two or three years, someone might come up to you and say, I saw your post three years ago, or um, I've gotten a few messages lately that people are like, please don't stop posting because some days that's the only thing that gets me through the week because it's just something that positive or a story that you share or something of that nature. So the that's why the organic posts matter because they it do. continues to share that story or help that one person, which builds that no like and trust factor back to that branded content that you've already scheduled. You know, I'm, I love that you said that too, Jeremy. And it just reminded me because that just happened this morning and on a post that I made and I took one simple line, one simple phrase. And this, especially in the morning, like when you wake up, you're like, I want coffee, but I had a revelation and this is great. But my post was a simple graphic in the background that's provided by Facebook and it said the soul is in control. The very first comment, it said, thank you for this sweet reminder. Today, I woke up pissed, legit, angry. It's like I opened my eyes, first thoughts to run wild through my mind and boom, instant rage. It's so wild how our ego, our minds can do a number on our moods and do what it can to shake our spirit. This is a great reminder. That yes, indeed, the soul is in control because after all feelings, uh, after all feelings are just sensations that we that have meaning because the mind placed a label on it. So don't let don't let it take you down a dark path. Instead, acknowledge a sensation and set it free. We are not the sensation, merely the awareness of it. Thanks for this reminder, Danny. I needed it today. And you know what that did? That sparked just a onslaught of likes. Not so many comments because. Some things don't require that, but that adds to that adds to the overall picture of everything. So what do you have to say and what you think, whatever you're receiving in your life, those messages, those lessons, make sure you share those every day. They're so important. So important. So um, I think we should switch directions here a little bit and start taking a deep dive because the question is going to be, well, can I use the same thing? This happens with scheduling. And I get this question a lot too. Can I post the same thing across all four media channels that I'm using or two media channels? So, Jeremy, why don't you go ahead and launch that off and kind of give an overview, starting with uh, Facebook? Well, the short answer is yes, you can do that. The caveat to that is you should not do that. <laughs> um, because each platform in its own native space needs its own type of native content. So for Facebook, the most powerful ones are live videos or native videos, which is something that you record previously and then post directly on Facebook. As I mentioned last week, don't use YouTube links or links out of the space because Danny already told you the platforms don't like you leaving their ecosystem. You want to stay there. Um, and then photos. Now, whether that's just a regular photo of something you're daily, what's going on, or a meme to tell a story or be comedic or tongue in cheek, something like that. The long form posts are really big on Facebook because there's space for it. Some of the other platforms either have limiting characters or it's just odd to experience long form on those. And then reels and stories are kind of the new big thing. Reels really are transformed from videos as you, like to talk about Instagram just for a half a second is reels are now videos. So if you post a video on Instagram, it's called a reel. And so it's the platforms are creating their own languages inside of, and instead of it being a video, now it's called a reel. Well, it's still a video. 
Sorry, well, I is, had to go on a mental getting, tangent. <laughs> no, it's, no, I agree. No, this this reminds me. It was like that's exactly those are how some of the conversations go in tech, and you're like, why is nothing getting done? And that's exactly why because everybody's more concerned about what you put the label on it for. Like you're like, yes. Sit there and label it together. Is that cheese? Well, no, it all depends. That's Gouda. No, okay, so that's cheese, but it's got another name. Yeah, but it's Gouda cheese. Okay, that's great. But you know, it's like you get to that place and it gets so micro, and that's that's the essence of like the the tech brain. It's the and and I love it. It's beautiful. It's um creation, right? Because you're looking at all aspects. But at the end of the day, when you're just trying to get something done simply, that's what we want to provide here for you. So yeah, I love that. That's great. Instagram, let's talk about that. So the things that are most valuable on there, content's a little bit different. So behind the scenes, photos, like in action. So let's say Jeremy's, like every time Jeremy posts up of him playing the drums in a picture, people respond to it. If he's reading a book, they're they're responding to it. Um, no different if I have my headphones on, I'm like, you know, just taking like a, a quick selfie, people respond to that stuff. Uh, the next thing, IG Reels, Jeremy just kind of talked about that. Instagram Reels are wonderful. Make sure you use the captions app because not everybody listens to video mm -hmm. with the audio, okay? And don't forget, we have to be, we have our, uh, we have people that are hearing impaired. So you want to make sure that you encapsulate everybody into that audience. Video tutorials, how-tos are very important. I can tell you when you teach somebody how to do something, teach them how to fish, they're going to love you forever, especially if it doesn't cost anything, okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in another episode because that's a wonderful, wonderful, magnificent study in human psychology and the way that we actually consume and interact and engage. The next thing, influencer content. This is going to be like, let's say you started a coffee company. Great example. Jeremy's got a, a coffee company. And, you know, what's the name of your coffee company? Artisan J Coffee. Yeah. The coffee is fantastic, by the way. You should go get it. Where, where should they get that at, Jeremy? Because artisan j dot artisan j coffee dot com easy okay good we oh, should make we should make him an official sponsor of the media monsters podcast so we're gonna get amped up next week yeah we will we'll get amped up with the artisan j coffee yes. so um that's a brand example of a brand but you could have a whole page of nothing but coffee coffee beans oh look at the coffee cup with the coffee beans so you know putting swag gear out there you could have a coffee cup, a sweatshirt, hats, like people are all about that life. Starbucks already proved that, right? When people came out, when they came out with the Starbucks hats and shirts, guess what? People are like, I love wearing that brand. Coca-Cola, same thing. All examples of brands that are very powerful. Even Nike, same thing, status symbol, right? So think about that. Motivational quotes and photos, those are important. Like the one that I just shared with you, you can put that on a nice background with an ocean view, or it could be something in the mountains that's very inspirational. Put that on there. And then product announcements. Hey, guess what? We've got a new product. We're dropping a book. We're dropping a course. We're dropping a XYZ. Make sure you check it out. Hey, go check out the new products we have in our store. Oh, wonderful. So that's, that's going to be the content that's going to be suitable for Instagram. All right. I guess that brings me to LinkedIn. Yeah. Let's, let's tackle this one. Yeah, we got to put on our suits and ties for that one. That's the We're, business. I'm not changing my hoodie. I'm leaving the hoodie on. Uh, however, you know, Inst LinkedIn is different than, especially different than Facebook. I think sometimes people try to mesh them together and they are different. Um, you want to think about LinkedIn is more like, what would you have in a business conversation? And Facebook's more like, what would you talk about? Like if you were hanging out or what would you talk about with a family member? And so when you think about conversational style, think about that for Facebook and LinkedIn as the separator. And so blog posts are great. You can actually, there's actually an article platform on LinkedIn, which is really great. So if you're into writing articles, it's a great place for people to see your writing in that technical and professional way. Um, native video is also very good. Um, LinkedIn just launched recently. And by recently, I mean, in the last few months, um, the ability to go live on their platform and do live videos, um, interviews, and webinar-based kinds of things on there, which is super great. And then just normal text, logo graphics, and long form again, because it's you're you're either sharing something that's knowledge-based, or you're educating, or you're talking about your brand in a, a way that they can connect with you because of the knowledge that you've gained. 
It's brilliant. I just had, I was thinking, I just went daydreaming for a minute because I was thinking about Jake from State Farm going live on LinkedIn. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, that guy would blow up and be really huge. He'd probably go viral on LinkedIn if he were to go, because everybody knows that it's a recognizable brand because of the Jake from State Farm, right? Yeah. So, and, and it only happened because they kept doing it in mass, the consistency, the frequency, those, those are two magic secrets there for you. You can post the same picture of a dog every single day, but if you do it consistently and with high frequency, people are going to know about that dog, especially if you give it a name. So think about that when you're going through that process. Um, and then, you know, as far as like scheduling, we've given you a lot so far to think about in this episode. So the next episode, we're really going to bring it home and we're going to tell you the optimal times and the days for each one of the main platforms. Um, so just put that in your, in your calendar so you know. But the final platform I want to talk about, one that may or may not exist by the time you hear this, but I'm sure it will. It's always going to be in existence. I really, quite frankly, even though they grilled the CEO of TikTok, everybody get, gets grilled, right? So right. all the stuff that they were talking about, the data, it's a lot of it's stored by a lot of like Zoom. And there's a lot of big companies in the United States that we use that store their data with the same place TikTok does here in the States. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're following that story, just keep an eye on it. So it's, it's a, it's a power grab or an attempt at one. All right. TikTok. So 15 second videos, those are powerful. Now you can go 15 second videos all the way up to three minutes. Um, for every three minute video though, you want to make four to five 30 second to 60 second videos. So you don't want your whole channel to be nothing but three minute videos, because remember people's attention spans are like, like that. And you've got about three seconds for them to decide if they're going to stay or if they're going to scroll up. So make sure you use that. Use words on the screen. Again, graphics, those are very important. You don't have to do the captions app or anything like that with that one. That's a little distracting because the format's a little bit shorter. So you could probably do something with like, hey, here's a part one or a part two, let people know, kind of assign their mind to that agenda. Like, hey, here's this. Or you can even write graphics on there too, like, hey, learn more at my website or go to XYZ, um, depending on the kind of content that you subscribe to. So I will tell you this, you can type in any subject inside of TikTok and people have made videos on it. So make sure you don't sleep on it. Make sure you stay consistent, use a high frequency. And then Jeremy, you have any final words for anybody today that's ready to go out and kind of dive into their journey of, of making their lives a lot easier? I think that one thing that can feel super overwhelming if you weren't taking notes during this episode, um, which you can go back and listen to the replay and share it like crazy because there was a lot of information inside of there. But what I would say was don't feel like you have to tackle all of the platforms all at once at the same frequency. Pick a frequency that feels comfortable to you. If you're like, I'm all in on Facebook, and I'm going to like do a drip on Instagram and LinkedIn because Danny said something very key and that's frequency and consistency. And whenever people are asking me, how much should I post? My answer is whatever you start with needs to always stay. So if your frequency is two times a week, then always hit two times a week and always at the same time because that's what makes it the frequency and the consistency. Is more better? Of course, more is better. We all know that. However, start with the consistency because that's what the algorithm picks up on. And then don't change it. Always be consistent. And then as you start to add more, just keep it there. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're ready for whatever that ramp up is. So when we talk about efficiencies, and delegation to a team member or bringing on other team members, that might be where you're like, okay, well, I see the value in posting once a day, but I really think if we could get to three times a day, we could increase our brand and increase our revenue to our company. Mm -hmm. Would that be worth bringing on an extra team member? And you'll already have the analytics to show you because you were consistent on your frequency. Yeah, that's good. Those KPIs, the key performance indicators, they do not lie. Numbers never lie. So be consistent. Remember, the more work you do, the more you get or the opportunities. So hope you have a great week. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Media Monsters. 
Make sure you follow us on YouTube at Media Monsters 1111. If you're not doing so already, if you're watching this, you happen to be watching this, but you can also see, you can see the video version of this at Media Monsters 1111 on YouTube and join us in our Facebook community. Ask to join. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is be a part of the community. Free. It's my favorite four letter F word. So mm, that's deep. And with that, we'll see you on next week's episode of Media <laughs> Monsters <laughs> for another conversation with Jeremy and Danny because you never know where it's going to go. I love it.